Hi guys, let's quickly discuss the inflammation questions that I had given you in the challenge yesterday. So let's look at them. Question number one on the screen. This was the chart which was made by one of the student and it answers majority of the queries. So here you should remember that uh, since the show trophoblast is the giant cell which is seen in placenta and macrophage of the placenta is a Hofbauer cell. So this is the chart that is made by that student. It's very beautiful. Look at this. Answer to the question was option 1. I hope you will be able to answer that. Coming to the question number 2 here guys. Here on the screen. of the following was not associated with granuloma so there are a lot of conditions which are associated with granuloma remember when i have given the most unusual options but remember the granuloma of syphilis is rich in plasma cells the rheumatoid arthritis granuloma has a peripheral palisading and vaginous granulomatosis uh, granuloma has geographical necrosis and peripheral palisading also remember whenever they ask you the option of necrotizing granuloma you should be knowing this chart EPA is granulomatosis and polyangitis, the other name of Vechnus. Right, guys. Okay, guys, coming to question number three on the screen here. This question was basically on the electrophoresis uh, and how you can make a diagnosis of inflammation on the basis of your protein electrophoresis. So, let's look at this graph. As I have already posted a picture of this, this is how a serum protein electrophoresis looks like. This is albumin, this is alpha 1, alpha 2, beta and this is a hump which is gamma and this the topest peak is albumin. It's a negative acute phase reactant so it decreases with acute inflammation or chronic inflammation. It decreases with inflammation. Apart from albumin, the other negative acute phase reactants are RAT. Okay, R for retinol uh, binding protein, A for albumin, T for transthyretin and another three, uh, T for trans so they are negative acute phase reactants which you should remember remember when it's an acute inflammation your gamma globulins are not increased whereas in chronic inflammation the gamma globulins are increased okay so that's a very important thing you have to remember so the answer to this question is chronic inflammation okay. so coming to the question number four here the question number four on the screen Remember, resident macrophages are derived from the embryo itself. Look at the chart below. Whereas, activated macrophages are derived from blood monocytes. Okay, so that was an easy question. Let's go to the uh, next question. But before going to the next question, remember there are two types of activated macrophages. Classically activated, which, are, which play a role in chronic inflammation. And alternatively activated, which play a role in repair. Now, let's come to the next question. So, which is an option? It was an easy question. So, look at the chart below. So, as you can see, mannose binding lectin is an option, right? That was the answer. And coming to the last question here. So, guys, let's look at the chart of all the uh, leukocytidation defects, and we have three type of LADs. that chart was self-explanatory lad 3 is due to firm ts defect okay so with this we finish the inflammation i hope you will be able to answer the questions well now bye and good night